While Blender development is moving at an aggressive pace, there are still entire areas that are unlikely to see meaningful updates for a long time. Not because they are unimportant, but because they are complex, niche, or expensive to maintain. This is less about preference and more about structural limitations. So it makes sense to look at the parts of Blender where add-ons will continue to carry the weight for years to come. Hard surface modeling remains one of Blender's most persistent pain points, and it is not disappearing anytime soon. Demand for sci-fi assets, weapons, vehicles, and industrial props continues to grow across games, films, and motion graphics. Until Blender ships a truly modern, non-destructive hard surface stack, this bundle will remain a staple in serious production workflows. There is an entire category of tools that will never be built into Blender by virtue of what they are. Asset collections and fully-fledged generators fall squarely into this category. Cinema 4D ships with massive libraries of materials, objects, generators, and presets because it has dedicated teams for that purpose. Blender simply cannot do the same without dramatically stretching an already tight budget. Maintaining such libraries would require full-time asset teams, and that cost has to come from somewhere. The result is clear. These tools will always live in the add-on ecosystem, and when you invest in them, you are investing in long-term value. Another area of Blender that may struggle to see meaningful upgrades in the future is simulations. This includes fluid simulation, RBDs, lighting, compositing, and camera tracking, core areas where progress has been steady but slow. If you come across a reliable simulation or utility add-on, it is worth holding on to it. Many artists have already shifted heavier work to tools like Embergen, Houdini, or even Cinema 4D, which now offer far more complete simulation workflows. For artists who do not want to juggle multiple subscriptions just to solve occasional problems, well-built Blender add-ons remain the most practical and sustainable option. I know many artists will push back against this, but Blender could genuinely benefit from some AI tools, not in creative decision-making, but in repetitive and time-consuming tasks where automation excels. One clear example is building complex node setups, especially when those setups are based on academic research or technical papers. Geometry nodes can already recreate almost any published simulation or method, uh, but manually translating research into working node graphs takes an enormous amount of time. An AI agent could realistically do that work in minutes. We have already seen AI become genuinely useful in other areas as well, such as generating base models, materials, textures, and even object placement with surprisingly strong results. Used correctly, these tools act as accelerators rather than replacements. However, for legal, ethical, and long-term reasons, it is very unlikely that this level of AI integration will ever ship with Blender by default. Just like hard surface modeling, creating detail by projecting information onto geometry, the way normal magic works, is extremely powerful and very unlikely to ever become a native Blender feature. This is not because it is a bad idea, but because it sits firmly in the category of production shortcuts. While similar techniques exist in some game engines, Blender's modeling toolset has not seen major conceptual shifts in a long time. That reality is not changing anytime soon, which makes tools like this long-term utilities rather than temporary hacks. Layer-based image editor. You will often hear the same advice. Use Photoshop, use Krita, Affinity is free. And while all of that is true, an image editor inside Blender however limited, will always be more efficient in practice. Being able to create masks from selected faces, see instant updates, adjust layers, and bake results directly into textures is difficult to compete with. Blender clearly needs proper layer-based image editing, but as long as external alternatives exist, it is easy to defer. That leaves add-ons as the only viable solution. Another area that is unlikely to see major change anytime soon is deep all-in-one production management. Things like shot tracking, task assignment, version control, approvals, and studio-wide automation are critical in large studios, but they vary wildly from team to team. Blender cannot realistically cater to all of those needs at once. As a result, these workflows are almost always handled by external tools, custom scripts, or studio pipelines, rather than the software itself. Even truly non-destructive modeling, in the sense of being able to go back and change any step at any time without workarounds, is unlikely to fully arrive soon. Blender will keep improving modifiers and procedural tools, but rebuilding the entire modeling foundation would be a massive undertaking. That kind of change would risk breaking existing workflows that millions of users rely on daily. Because of that, 
add-ons will continue to fill the gap for artists who want more flexible and forgiving workflows. When you step back and look at the bigger picture, a clear pattern starts to emerge. The areas where Blender struggles to move quickly. Hard surface modeling, simulations, large-scale generators, asset libraries, production management, advanced image editing, and AI-assisted workflows are not minor gaps. They are deep, expensive problems that require constant maintenance and long-term commitment. These are exactly the kinds of problems that add-ons are best positioned to solve. Hard surface tools fill in for the lack of a truly non-destructive modeling system. Generators and asset libraries compensate for the absence of built-in content pipelines. Simulation add-ons step in where native tools lag behind modern expectations. Image editing add-ons cover workflows that, that Blender has little incentive to fully replace. Even AI, where it makes sense, will continue to live on the outside, helping with repetitive and technical tasks rather than becoming a core feature. This is not a failure of Blender, it is its design. Blender stays flexible by staying focused, and everything that falls outside that focus becomes an opportunity for the ecosystem to grow. That is why the add-ons artists rely on today are not temporary solutions, but long-term extensions of Blender itself. As Blender evolves, these tools will not become less important. They will become the reason Blender continues to compete at all.